Hello and welcome to LessonSilla. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to configure Microsoft Defender for Endpoint in Intune for Windows 10 and 11. Now there are four steps in this process. The first one is enabling Microsoft Defender for Endpoint in Intune. The second step is creating a device configuration policy and applying it to devices that you wish to onboard to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. The third step is creating and assigning a compliance policy to set device risk level. And the final step is creating a conditional access policy to enforce the compliance settings that you have defined in step three. So with the last step, if a device is deemed risky by Microsoft Defender for Endpoint, depending on the settings that you set, you can block that device from accessing your company resources until the device has been marked compliant. So without further ado, let's go ahead and see how this is done. Okay, the first step is to go ahead and enable the connection between Microsoft Intune and Defender for Endpoint. As you can see on the screen, I've logged into Microsoft Intune Admin Center using my Global Administrator account. And I'm going to show you how it's going to look like when you check the setting for the very first time. So click on Endpoint Security. Scroll down until you see Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Click on this and you're going to see the connection status as either unavailable or not set up. This is expected because we've never set up Microsoft Defender for Endpoint with Intune. So don't worry about this. I'm going to show you now how to enable the connector so Microsoft Defender and Microsoft Intune can establish a connection and they can talk to each other. So in here, I've got the URL that you need to go to. I'm going to copy this URL and paste it on my browser. I will put this URL in the YouTube description box below so you can get it from there. This will take you straight to the setting that we need to enable. It's under Settings, Endpoints, Advanced Features. Scroll down all the way to the bottom until you see Microsoft Intune Connection. So this is the connector that we need to enable so Microsoft Intune and Defender for Endpoint can talk to each other. I'm going to go ahead and select On and click Save Preferences. Okay, that has been done. Now let's go back and refresh Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. As you can see, the connection status has become available now. So this means the connection has been enabled and Windows Defender for Endpoint and Intune can start to talk to each other. Now there's one more setting that you need to remember to enable and that will make this connection status connected and you'll see a green tick. That's what we're looking for. So scroll down until you see this setting here. Connect Windows devices version, don't worry about it so much, and above to Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. So this is the setting that we need to enable. So if you click on this small icon, it will tell you what this setting does. I'm going to go ahead and click on and hit save. Okay, so the connector settings have been saved. As you can see, as soon as I saved, the connection status is showing as enabled now and you can see a green tick, which means the first part has been completed successfully. Now that we have enabled Microsoft Defender for Endpoint connection with Microsoft Intune, the next stage is to go ahead and onboard your devices to Defender for Endpoint using Microsoft Intune. In order to do that, click on Endpoint Detection and Response. We're going to have to create a policy. So click on the plus icon to create a policy. In the platform section, select Windows 10 and Windows 11. Bear in mind that Defender for Endpoint is applicable for Windows Server operating systems as well. However, you need a separate special license for that. And if you guys want to see how to enroll Windows servers to Defender for Endpoint, 
put your request in the comment section um, below and I will do another video at a later stage about that. But for now, let's focus on Windows 10 and 11. So I'm going to select the first option and under profile, I'm going to select endpoint detection and response. Click create. Give it a name. I'm going to call it onboarding policy. You can give it a description as well if you wish to do so. After that, click next. Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. The first setting, set it to auto from connector. This will automatically get the package that is required to um, be installed on the endpoint in order to enroll or onboard your endpoint to Defender for Endpoint. Uh, so select auto from connector, as I mentioned before, sample sharing, um, I'm going to select to all. Uh, if you hover over this little um, I, um, icon, it's going to give you a little description about what each setting does. But if you want to know briefly about what these settings does, sample sharing means it's going to share um, samples of all your um, files and data so Defender for Endpoint can analyze it. And, and make decisions uh, based on, on the state of those files. Um, and uh, this setting, telemetry reporting frequency, this has been deprecated by the looks of it. Um, usually it used to be set to expedite. So as soon as the telemetry data was available, it would be uploaded to Defender for Endpoint uh, for analysis. Um, but it has been deprecated now. So you can just leave the setting not configured if you like but in this case I'm just going to select to um, expedite and click next. Now in here if you want to give this uh, profile some tags for identification purposes you can do so. I'm not going to do that. Click next. I'm going to assign it to a group. Now I highly highly recommend that when you deploy this to a production environment make sure that you test this out with a small group of pilot users or uh, with your IT team just to make sure that it works as expected before you deploy this to the production or the wider uh, organization. Since this is a test environment, I'm just going to go ahead and um, click all users. Um, and if you want to exclude any um, specific people or, or in this case groups um, you can add them here as well um, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is and click next and create so this is the second step in terms of onboarding the devices so once you create a policy and assign it to a, a set of users um, it's going to go ahead and do its thing and um, if you um, give it some time and come back to um, Defender for Endpoint and if you scroll it down you're going to see in here uh, the number of devices that have been um, onboarded to Defender for Endpoint it's been a while now, but unfortunately, I cannot still see my test device showing up here with the health state. Um, this is um, totally um, expected. Um, sometimes it can take a day or two um, uh, for the devices to um, show up here, depending on how many devices you've got and whether they're online or offline at the time of you um, deploying your um, onboarding policy. So don't worry if you're not seeing your devices in here straight away. There's one other way that you can check to make sure that the policy is fine and it has been applied to um, your devices. Uh, in my case, I have one test device. So I'm going to see if the policy has been applied to that device successfully. So go back to endpoint detection and response. Click on the policy that you just created and as you can see here, it says one succeeded. So I have only one test device and it seems like it has been onboarded um, to Defender for Endpoint uh, successfully. So that's a good sign. Now we're going to move on to our third step, which is defining a compliance policy. Um, so in order to create a compliance policy, the devices 
Uh, scroll down until you see compliance policies. Now, make sure um, you give a name that you can identify later if you want to make any changes. In platform, uh, select Windows 10 and later. Profile type is automatically selected. Click Create. I'm going to call this um, Defender for Endpoint Compliance policy. Basically what this policy is used for or does is it's going to tell Defender for Endpoint what is an acceptable level of risk as far as your organization is concerned. So you're going to put a description, you can put a description in here if you like. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to click next. In compliance settings, select Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. And uh, this is the setting that we're going to set. Require the device to be at or under the machine risk score. Uh, so clear is uh, the most restrictive um, measure, or the, in this case, I recommend that you select clear. Um, so there's no room for any malware or anti uh, or a virus or a Trojan um, to do anything. Um, as far as Defender for Endpoint is concerned. So select it to clear the most restrictive setting um, and click Next. Now here you can select uh, what actions you want to do. Um, now by default it's going to mark the device non-compliant and um, the non-compliant uh, status is going to come immediately um, and if you want uh, your IT administrator or someone in your IT team to get alerts when a device is marked as non-compliant you can um, do that as well uh, but in this case I'm just going to leave the, the standard settings and go next and I'm going to once again apply this to the entire organization all users but if you're doing this in a real environment, make sure that you sign this to a pilot group, the same pilot group that you use for the um, onboarding of devices to endpoint, uh, Defender for Endpoint. I'm just gonna, again, select all users because I have only one user in my test environment. Click Next and click Create. Okay, so you've just created a Defender for Endpoint Compliance Policy. Uh, once again, it is going to take a little while uh, for this um, report to um, spit out um, any information. So just be patient and once uh, it's got uh, data, um, it'll um, show you in here in terms of what are the compliant devices and if there are any non-compliant devices. All right, so that's the third step. Now we're coming into the last stage where we're going to create a conditional access policy. I am going to go to um, portal.azure.com and click on um, Azure AD or Microsoft Entra ID um, as they call it now. Scroll down, go to security, conditional access, policies. This is where we're going to create our conditional access policy. Basically, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a policy enforcing the compliance settings that we um, configured in third step. So we're telling the conditional access policy, if you find any devices that are not compliant, what you want it to do. Basically, so click new, um, say Defender for Endpoint. You can give it any name you like. I'm going to call it Defender for Endpoint Compliance. In this case, I'm going to apply to all users, but as I mentioned before, multiple times, try with the smaller pilot group and then include um, more people um, once you're confident or comfortable with the results. Um, now, target resources in here, you can um, select um, what apps, if there are any apps that you don't want uh, a, a non-compliant device to access. In this case, I'm just going to select all 
cloud apps. I don't want a non-compliant device to access any of my cloud apps. So I'm just going to select um, cloud all cloud apps in this setting and condition. Um, we are going to select homes. Configure. I'm going to select Windows. Done. Access controls. Click Grant. And in here, we're going to grant access, but we're going to make sure that the device to be marked as compliant. So if the device is not compliant, we are not going to grant access. So this is the conditions um, that we want uh, to enable. Um, there are other um, settings as well, in case you want to include some of the other options in here. But for now, I'm just going to um, select this setting and uh, click Select. Security defaults are still enabled. I should have checked that before, so something to remember, you need to always disable security defaults before you can enable conditional access policies. So I'm going to disable my security defaults um, and select my organization is using conditional access. Save. Um, it's disabled now and it should let me... Um, Get it refresh the policy, it should let uh, me enable the policy now. All right, I'll turn on the policy and it has been saved successfully. Okay, so guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you learned something new, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you've got any questions, put a comment below and um, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Until next one, have a great day and take care. Bye-bye.